Welcome to Daniel Reviews. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and today we're looking at the Makita 40 volt XGT dirt auger. Let's get into it. I just got to point this out. It's not XGT, it's XPT. Now, I have no idea. I suspect this is some sort of subtle marketing reason why they're doing the XPT instead of XGT. My guess, maybe outdoor equipment, they're giving it the PT treatment. I honestly don't know. It's confusing, and it's one of the many things that I dislike about Makita, is that they do a lot of things for no real reason. They got the XGT here, but they got the XPT here. I don't know what it means. Well, let's open it up and see what's inside. What do we find inside? Well... That's what's inside. Let's take a look. That is one beefy handle. <clears throat> Here's another very beefy looking handle. Imagine that'll come in handy in a minute. The instruction manual and the piece de resistance. Holy mackerel. That looks like one massive looking <clears throat> right angle drill, doesn't it? Good lord, look at the chuck on that thing. All right, that is something. Let's see what else we've got. That's an important piece, no doubt. Another important piece, no doubt. To be honest, it's already got more pieces than I thought would be in here. What is over here? Holy crap. Woo! Lots of hardware. Some assembly required. Put this together. Shouldn't be too hard. That's what he said. The bolt is not needed for this tool if you want to use this tool as a cordless earth auger. Well, that's kind of the only reason I got it. I'm just super impressed by the size and quality of this. This is a huge tool. Okay, so these big beefy ones go down here. Maybe I'll just do that first because I can't seem to, not having much luck with the upper ones yet. <sighs> now let's see if we can get these things. Aha, I think the problem was I was possibly using the wrong sized bolts. That's what was. All right, I think I've got them all in there. So now we're going to do the tightening part. <clears throat> That's probably good. That's probably good. Flip it over. It ain't done until it's done on both sides. Get this one going. Yeah. So now we've gotten this attached, so that's probably progress. Let's take a look at the next step. So there's some options about how you can line this up, probably with what's best for you. But with this, one is a six inch auger bit and one is an eight inch. I've got a project that I need to look at that. Just look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely massive. It's fantastic. Look at that. That is just massive. All right. Set that one down. <clears throat> Buying factory reconditioned auger bits because there's just really no, let me look at this. This is brand new. I think I'm going to start with mounting the 8 inch and this is exactly what we're going to do. You can see how this will work. There's just a cotter pin that will slide in there, you know, attach the bit to the auger. So I am going to start by attaching this in here using the chuck here. I have not used a chuck in a long, long time. 
I don't design and build earth augers. I have no idea. But I would have loved if it wasn't a chuck style bit. Don't know if that's, maybe there's some limitations as to why that is. I don't know. It's not for me to decide, but I don't particularly like the old chuck style. I wish uh, there was better ways. We're going to dismount the, the auger itself. Okay, I'm not lined up right. I take that back. Come out of there, you demon. All right, let's see. Let's try to line it up better this time. I think that is about right. There we go. That's lined up. We'll slap that on there. We are, we are mounted. Real quick before I get too far into this, just want to go over the controls uh, so that you know what 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 this offers. Basically, here is your switch between your two speeds. You've got one and you've got two, and that's it as far as speeds. On the handle itself, you've got the trigger. I'm a little surprised at that. I thought this, okay, yeah. So I thought it was a two-stage safety trigger. Um, it's not. <clears throat> this is a direction switch just like on your drill. Press it that way to twist this way. Press it that way to twist the other way. And if you have it in just in the middle, it's locked. So you can't pull the trigger. Um, <clears throat> that was my bad. And beyond that, that is really all the features this thing has. So I think with no further ado, let's go drill some holes. We are going to be building a retaining wall. And in order to build a retaining wall, I'm going to need to dig out several holes for my post to support the wall. Also, hopefully you can see this thing is just absolutely massive. It is huge. Um, heavy. Um, certainly not as heavy as a gas-powered one by any means. But it is just, you know, compared to your typical power tool, positively massive. So, we're going to start by digging a, our, our kind of our center hole. And we're just gonna see how this works. And uh, I'll probably come in closer for a better look. So the ground, I will admit, is fairly soft. We just had a rain um, last night, a pretty good drenching rain that is the kind you, you really want. And uh, we're going to use that as our starting point. I'm gonna put a hole right here, I think. Maybe about there. Let's do this thing. Hit a root there already. <laughs> All right, that, that is really impressive. It just went right down through it. We're going to reverse it a little bit. Kind of clear that out a little bit and then go back in. Look at that hole. That is perfect. That took me uh, 60 seconds, give or take, maybe two minutes. I have dug holes before, and I can tell you this is going to save me a tremendous amount of time. That's awesome. And that even this root really didn't give me a hard time. And that's good because I'm going to be encountering probably several roots along this wall. So probably if you're following along at home, new, but I did not and I want to make sure and call it out. Uh, this handle, as you can see, I put it on backwards. I didn't realize that until I was working today with the auger, and I realized what this is actually supposed to do. <laughs> so I thought I had it attached right, but I didn't. I've got it on backwards right now, as you can see. So if you're lefty like me, you're going to hold this thing like this as you're drilling. And if it binds up, this bar protects it from jamming into you before your hand can stop it, right? I didn't realize that. I had it facing the other way, and obviously it didn't work. It worked fine when I had it up here. That's not a problem. But the further down into the hole you get, the lower this gets. And I got an absolute shiner of a contusion there on my shin when it spun into my shin. The uh, anti, oh, what do they call this, you know, lockup or whatever, does work fairly well. It does stop it most of the time, but there's a few times where it kind of does a 
violent twist and if I had this in the right place it would have definitely helped everything so just wanted to pass that along as a tip you probably all right I think this is going to wrap up my video on the uh, uh, Makita dirt auger as you can see I've definitely been doing <laughs> a lot of hole digging with this thing I've spent a lot of time with it over the past several days and um, overall I really like it I will say that there are some things I don't like about it and one is I hate, absolutely hate this old style chuck. I had a couple times where it just loosens up as you work with it and it slides right off and it's a real pain in the butt to get it tightened back on there while you're you know, out in the hot sun digging holes. So absolutely hate this, terrible, don't love that at all. Um, the kickback, even with this installed properly, I, I did a little video on how I had it messed up. It, it, it works okay uh, most of the time. However, if you don't put these screws all the way closest to the bend, this, this metal is not really, honestly, it's not sturdy enough. And if it kicks and your, your body's hitting it here, and you've got this further back, it will, it's already started to bend it a little bit. Um, so I wasn't really impressed with the sturdiness of this. I felt like that should have been a lot stronger. A lot stronger and um, the anti-kickback is not great like it, it does catch in um, and, and it's fine when you're, you're you know you're standing up and just starting your hole but as you get much further in and you're down you know on your about to here give or take uh, it, it's not it's not fantastic and it's really easy to get jammed into your shins if you don't very studiously use this uh, reactionary force measure, whatever they want to call that. But, would I recommend it? Yes. Um, the 40 volt platform I think is great for this. I'd be very uncomfortable trying to use something that was only an 18 volt. I feel like that would not be enough uh, enough power at all to drive through some deep holes with a big bit like uh, this 8 inch. So, I, I think it's a great tool. Is it worth the premium price tag? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I think so just because I, I would be really concerned about trying to do anything smaller. Um, so it's, if you've got a lot of digging uh, holes in your future, then you might want to go ahead and make the investment. Otherwise, maybe you're better off just renting something, but I don't know that I would go with anything smaller than this. Alright, that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, hopefully the next one will be coming out soon. Thanks.